Okay, next up in our physics topics is global warming. Now, this one is a favourite of the examiners, so I'm pretty positive there will probably be a question on this in the exam, because it's topical and it's in the news a fair bit, so there's a good chance it will be on the exam as well. Okay, so the greenhouse effect. It's a really, really important effect, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing just to put that out there. I know we often say greenhouse effect and people think, oop, climate change, uh, we're destroying the earth, we're all gonna die. Not really what the deal is. The greenhouse effect, um, if it wasn't there, there would be no life on earth. So it is really, really important. The problem is when the greenhouse, get, go, greenhouse effect goes too far. So the basics, what happens to the greenhouse effect? So what we've got here is energy that's coming in from the sun. So this is really, really short wavelength heat and light. So infrared radiation is the stuff we're interested in. And because it's really short wavelength, it comes straight through our atmosphere and comes to the Earth. Now this then heats up the Earth. The Earth then gets warm and it starts giving out infrared radiation itself. But what it gives out is longer wavelength radiation because it's not as hot as the sun was. Now this longer wavelength radiation quite a lot of it gets absorbed by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now a little bit escapes, but a lot gets absorbed. And once it's been absorbed, it then gets um, ejected out, so it gets reflected out in all sorts of directions. And a lot of it ends up coming back down to the Earth. So this energy, this heat energy, the infrared radiation, gets trapped inside our atmosphere and it warms the Earth up. So just to give that to you in some bullet points. Infrared from the sun is short wavelength. That goes through the atmosphere. The Earth absorbs this energy to get warmer. The warm Earth emits long wavelength infrared radiation, and that is absorbed by some of the gases in the atmosphere. Now, the more this happens, the warmer the Earth will get. Now, hopefully, for those of you who've done the higher, who've been looking at the higher stuff, this should sound really familiar to the passive heating that we talked about earlier on in the physics topic because it's basically the same thing it's just instead of the atmosphere instead of the glass on the building we've got the atmosphere that surrounds the earth okay so what are the greenhouse gases it's quite important that you know carbon dioxide i'm quite sure you already know because that's the one that gets all the press but there is also water vapor and methane so let's start by talking about carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide does have a lot of natural sources. It is not just man-made. So some of the natural sources of carbon dioxide are from naturally occurring forest fires. Uh, so when anything burns because of natural causes, that releases carbon dioxide. Volcanic eruptions. Every time a, volca a volcano starts emitting gas, so degassing, there will be some carbon dioxide in there, which gets into the environment. We also get it from the decay of dead plants and animals which we talked about when we did the carbon cycle back on biology too, so that should be ringing some bells as well. Respiration, any time any living thing does respiration, so the chemical reaction inside the cells to release energy, carbon dioxide is the byproduct and we exhale it. And we also get some carbon dioxide released from the oceans. Generally they absorb more than they release, but there is some that gets released from the oceans. So those are natural sources, but as we all know, there are man-made sources. Uh, the big one is from burning fuels. Um, so basically anything that we use to burn, to, um, or that we get from burning fuels. So cars, factories, uh, electricity, most forms of it. Um, so whether we're burning biomass or if we're burning uh, coal, oil and gas, all of those things will release carbon dioxide. Interestingly, quite a lot is uh, released when we make cement. It's just one of those random facts they really want you to know. And on the list is also deforestation. Because when we chop down trees, the wood um, releases, will, well, it'll either get burnt for fuel, which will release carbon dioxide. But when we reduce the amount of trees, we reduce the amount of um, plants there are that can take in carbon dioxide. So that, in essence, increases the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And it's kind of a double whammy because often we cut down trees um, so that we can either burn them 
or so that we have more planting space, which as you're about to see causes the release of other types of greenhouse gases. So that's carbon dioxide. Um, just a note, for those of you doing the higher, you are likely to be given data on these things then have to be able to discuss which is the more important effect. Um, but it's mostly what makes the difference between the foundation and the higher is how they ask you to use data on these subjects. So moving on, uh, water vapour. The one you probably didn't know about, but is in fact the most significant greenhouse gas. Makes up about 50% of the greenhouse effect is from water vapour and most water vapour is naturally occurring. So most of the greenhouse effect is actually a natural effect. Uh, less than 0.01% comes from human activity. So water vapour is the most important greenhouse gas. So for the higher paper, you are expected to know that, and for the foundation, it doesn't hurt to know that. You do need to remember there's water vapour. Right, our next one is methane. So natural sources of methane are whenever we get something decomposing in a low oxygen environment. So if there's just not much, much oxygen present and something's died, we tend to get methane rather than carbon dioxide being given off. Um, so this happens a lot in wetlands. So wetlands can be quite a large source of methane. And uh, termite mounds as well, actually. Termites give out an awful lot of uh, methane. So where you find termite mounds, you find large concentrations of methane. Now those are natural sources, but we can, or human impact has caused more release of methane into the environment. And it comes from things like livestock farming, rice paddies, landfill sites, and mining. So remember earlier when I said that when we cut down trees, we remove the ability for those trees to take in carbon dioxide but often trees are being cut down so that we have more land to graze cattle on. And cattle release an awful lot of methane. So it's sort of impacting the effect. It, it, it doubles the effect of the release of these greenhouse gases, which is not a good thing. Um, and rice paddy is also a very big source of methane. Uh, it's basically because they're like artificial wetlands. So we're sort of having this decay and decomposition in the low oxygen environment, which naturally produces methane but it's a human effect because we decided to grow the rice. Okay, so we've talked about the greenhouse effect. The next thing is climate change. So the greenhouse effect can lead to climate change. The two things are slightly different. So climate change is basically the idea that changes in our atmosphere can cause changes in the climate. Now remember, climate is about weather over a long period of time. It's not just uh, looking out the window and saying, oh, it's not got warmer today. It's about looking at the trend over a very long period of time. Um, so when it comes to climate change, there are a couple of facts that the exam board would like you to know. And they are the fact that smoke from factories can reflect the infrared radiation back towards the earth, so it has a warming effect on the climate whereas dust from volcanoes reflects radiation away from the Earth, so therefore that can have a cooling effect on the atmosphere. So those are the two examples of climate change that the exam board would like you to know for your exam. So the last thing that will be linked to the greenhouse effect topic is the idea of debate within the scientific community. Now there are loads of opinions on global warming and climate change. And we can start from a position of saying that most scientists do agree that global warming is causing climate change. So the effects of the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are causing the climate to change. Now most people agree on that, most scientists agree on that. But there is still disagreement on the topic because there's disagreement about how big of a problem that is or if it is in fact a problem at all. And there is also disagreement about how much of the climate change is due to human impact and how much of it is natural. There is an awful lot of argument about this. Now, if you believe that uh, global warming, the changes in, our, in global warming in our atmosphere are entirely natural effects, then you would be arguing that there is no point in changing the way we do things. There's no point in reducing our carbon footprint. There's no point in trying to make sure that we use um, more fuel efficient technologies or we look for alternative fuel sources. 
However, if you think that man-made sources are affecting climate change, then you're going to be much more pro um, new technologies, uh, renewable materials, using less plastics, these sorts of things. And you, the, there is disagreement on it. No one fully agrees on this. So this is a source of contention. Now, as I said, there is agreement that global warming is happening and that it's causing climate change. That is not in debate. What is in debate is how big of an effect that's going to have on our day-to-day -day lives and did we cause it or not. So they will probably give you some data or some opinions on this. And what they often like to do is ask you to identify the difference between evidence and opinions. So evidence would be concrete facts, so um, like a table of data that shows the numbers going up or a table of emissions or a graph of emissions versus temperature and showing a positive correlation, so a line that goes up. Opinions would be um, I believe or I think, any statements that start like that. And they often like you to identify them in the context of the greenhouse effect and climate change. OK, I've witted on about this one for far too long, mostly because it's really interesting and it is really relevant to your lives at the minute. It's going to have a big impact on the way that the, um, the future of the planet unfolds. Now, that may sound like a sweeping statement, but it's, it's kind of true. So it's important that you understand what's going on so you can have an opinion on it. Don't just let policymakers decide for you. Look at the evidence for yourselves and decide what you think we need to do about it. OK, on that um, ground-shattering piece of advice that's changed all your lives, I'm sure, um, I'm going to call it a day. So if you do have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. OK, and I will see you all next lesson.